All right, so today I'm going to show you how to create an appendix in your National History Day paper. Uh, this is a paper that I wrote a couple of years ago or started to. I made it just to make videos off of, so it's not quite complete in every single space. Um, but I wanted to show you how to format the appendix. So this is my paper. This is, uh, you know, my introduction, my thesis, my body paragraphs. They go on for several pages. Um, this is Latin filler text, just in case you're curious. It's just a, it's a placeholder that uh, designers sometimes use. Um, so appendices require in-text citations, just like everything else, and we'll talk about those in a second. So when you get to the end of your paper, so you finish, here's the conclusion and everything, uh, and you get to the appendix image. So appendices are usually labeled in one of two ways, either with uh, Roman numerals or with letters. You could do A, B, C, D, you could do one, two, three. I, you know, I just, I do Roman numerals because it's easier, but there's certainly nothing wrong with doing it in um, like appendix A, appendix B. Um, but I had five images. This one was from one of my primary sources. This is a screenshot of a newspaper. Um, and so I took this screenshot and saved it as a JPEG. So I was able to insert it, you know, going insert and then image and then upload from computer. Um, so I've got my appendix one. This does need to be centered. The style guide's pretty specific about that. So this is the only thing that you'll really center here in your paper, maybe besides the title. Beneath it, there is a caption that goes with it. So I put, uh, just some notes here to myself so you can see. You could also pause and read these if you want. Um, I, but I put here a brief caption of what it is. These words don't count against you. So uh, this is just telling what the article was about. If I'd added any commentary, then that would have been included in my, I, my account, but we're not gonna worry about that. Um, the last thing you need to do is just directly copy the bibliography citation. So it's literally copied from my bibliography. I just copied it here and put it here. The formatting guide requires it. That's just the way that it is. So for an appendix image, you need to label it with a letter or number. Uh, you need to put the, put the source in that we're looking at and then the caption that says what it is and then the citation. So you can see I've repeated the process for appendix two. Uh, same thing, this was another newspaper article. Uh, same thing with three, although this one was a, an image from the Library of Congress. Uh, President Ford testified before the House Representatives. So I listed that in here and I put the citation from the Library of Congress. And I literally, again, copied and pasted that from my bibliography. Appendix uh, four was an image of him in the Oval Office because I was talking about how he works as president. And then here's uh, one from his campaign from 1976 against Jimmy Carter. So. Um, I'm not a big fan of this, so I'd probably trim this down because this is some extra material from the Library of Congress. Um, but that is how you create a bibliography or an appendix. So when you're citing them in, in person, because you need to tell the reader where to stop and look at the appendix images. So let's go back up to the first one. Yeah. So right here, this is where I included my first reference to the appendix. Um, you need to include a, a parenthetical reference. So that's just the parentheses. You put C appendix, you know, whatever it is, one, two, three. It needs to go in order. So like the first image I look at should be appendix one, then appendix two. So you'll need to rearrange the images to go in the order. Um, you can also pause here to look at that note again that explains it a little further. Um, but basically what this is telling me is the readers that when I get to this where it says C appendix one, I need to stop reading the paper. I need to go look at the appendix, read the caption, and then go back to the paper. So really you're using a appendix images to offer more context for your writing. So they say a picture is worth a thousand words and this is where you get to use those. So very briefly, that's how you uh, create an appendix. If you have any questions, please send me an email.